assemble, I'm Matt. Great to have you here. Let's talk about the WWE King of the Ring 2024 because we finally know what the bracket is going to look like on the men's side of this entire tournament. I love a good tournament. I love it all across the board. And it's been a while, it's been a hot minute since WWE has done the King of the Ring tournament right. Now, we'll take a look today at just the men's side of the tournament, because now we know what the bracket is gonna look like, give you some predictions of where we think we will go with this, and what it could mean for the winner this year. We're also gonna take a look at another video and do the women's side of things once the bracket is all shaken out, because we will know all the participants coming up on SmackDown. They might reveal it as we do this video. Anyways, the easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed perfectly to do just that. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy and even enjoyable. For me, I sit at my desk for hours, and while I'm working, I often need a pen to fiddle with, or worse, I go for my phone to distract myself. Fume helps me kick that habit just by holding it. The device itself has just got this rotating end to it, and it's so satisfying that it clicks around all the time, and it will stop all that fidget for me and it has so many five-star reviews fume draws flavor to your mouth you can ditch the bad habit altogether for me it's a great alternative because there's no nicotine there's non-toxic flavors so it's a guilt-free alternative there is no vapor so you can use it anywhere you like the taste is great and the smell is great too the other thing is that it just feels premium it's got such a high quality design to it that i love flavored air isn't like anything else fume cores are closer to like a herbal tea fume has lots of delicious flavors too which is crazy so you can choose from flavors like crisp mint and orange vanilla fume has served over 150,000 customers and you could be the next success story for a limited time use my code assemble to get 10 percent off a journey pack head to tryfume.com that's tryfum.com and use code assemble or scan and the QR code on screen to save 10% off your order today. I am actually very intrigued this year with the King of the Ring tournament in the last several years. And the last one was Xavier Woods and it, it was it was it was fine. I like that I like that Woods won King of the Ring, don't get me wrong. I think he, he was great, but the, the the several years of Woods and then prior to that the King of the Ring tournament really didn't mean much of anything. It didn't have the, the the impact. It didn't feel like Bret Hart, Stone Cold, winning the King of the Ring tournament, Owen Hart. Even William Regal was great as King of the Ring. Booker T, that's how we got King Booker. So there's been like a lot of good stuff in years past. There's also been a lot of not, not, not so hot things with King of the Ring. So I am excited now that we are in the Paul Levesque, Triple H era, everyone's getting a pedigree. I think that this has the potential to be a really good tournament and we could see, you know, some superstars actually advance their careers versus just being given a king or queen gimmick. So let's take a look at the bracket. Monday Night Raw has just happened. We know what's gonna happen on Friday Night SmackDown. Looking at the bracket for Monday Night Raw and how things shook out. Gunther took on Sheamus in the main event of Monday Night Raw and Gunther won in, in advance. This is not too surprising, but this was a hard hitting banger of a match. I actually really did enjoy this. Kofi Kingston versus Rey Mysterio is also in the bracket, but it's not happening on TV. This is actually gonna be happening at a live event, which I think is a very interesting and actually a really good way to entice the live crowd so that they could actually post this on social. They could play the match if they want to, but it's a great incentive if you're gonna go to a WWE live event, you're getting something out that you're getting a qualifying match for King of the Ring. And on Raw, we got Dragonoff in not his Raw debut, but since the draft coming up to Monday Night Raw, taking on Ricochet. This match, just to pause on this for a second for, for Mr. Dragonoff. This was a great, great showcase for Dragunov and what I wanted to see leading up to the King of the Ring and knowing that he was getting drafted over to Monday Night Raw was that I wanted to see Dragunov get showcased. This is exactly, in my opinion, I think this is exactly what you do with somebody like Ilya. You get him in the tournament, you have him put on just huge, awesome matches. Someone like Ricochet is great for him to work with, to bounce all over the place, and they did just that. They put on a great, great match, getting him over with the crowd, getting him established with the broader audience outside of NXT is really great for Ilya. And I'm curious how far he will advance in the tournament because the bracket is shaping up to be very interesting. And then we got Jey Uso going up against Finn Balor and Jay picked up the win. This was not going to be the originally scheduled match. We were supposed to get Drew McIntyre versus Finn Balor. I was kind of excited to see that, but Drew is, he's got the elbow injury. So they're, they're saving Drew, which is fine. 
they had the CM Punk segment and Drew and all of that stuff. I thought that was fine. I thought it, I thought it was actually a lot of fun how Drew left the arena and Punk showed up right after him. It was good stuff. But for the King of the Ring tournament in the bracket, you got Jey Uso advancing. This does make sense to me. Jay just came off of Backlash. He lost to Damian Priest. This is a good way to keep Jay giving him a little bit more momentum as he moves on to the tournament. Now, let's look at the other side of the bracket because we have the SmackDown side has been revealed. For the SmackDown side, I gotta say it's it's actually looking it's it's looking really, really strong. So we have AJ Styles going up against the Viper, Randy Orton, one on one. Okay, for this match. I actually think AJ is going to advance in King of the Ring. I think kind of like Jey Uso, AJ had a awesome match against Cody at Backlash. I think you need AJ to move on into this tournament. Now, the way they could do it, does AJ get a clean win over Randy Orton? Probably not. Randy is still left strong. He doesn't eat a lot of losses. They want to keep him going. And realistically, someone like Randy shouldn't lose in King of the Ring. Randy should probably win the entire thing. But if you're gonna have AJ go over in this, I think you need to have the new bloodline get in there and take out Randy Orton, thus continuing the bloodline solo, Tama Tonga, Tangaloa, that whole story arc going for another show. So I think Randy gets taken out, AJ advances. Then you get Baron Corbin returning to SmackDown after the draft and going up against Carmelo Hayes. This again should be a really good match. I actually like Corbin's work that he's done in NXT. They'll probably draw on the history of Corbin winning King of the Ring and getting this King Corbin. And you got the fresh new superstar on the main roster of Carmelo Hayes. Hayes needs to move on. Corbin, I think, is in this spot. He's gonna eat the loss. He's gonna be knocked out in the first round. You need someone like Carmelo Hayes, kind of like Ilya, to showcase what he can do. Give him 10 plus minutes in this thing. Let Carmelo fly all over the ring and advance in the tournament. So I think Carmelo is gonna move on. Another good match that we should see have some consequence here. Santos Escobar, LA Knight, yeah. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against each other. And I gotta say, LA Knight's gotta move on. If you don't have LA Knight move on in the tournament, this could be a little bit of a tricky one because if you don't have LA Knight move on in the tournament, what's he doing? I don't know. I got worried about Mr. Knight. I like LA Knight, but then you got Santos. You can't give Santos all of these losses. Like Santos was dealing with Carlito and the LWO, but that is now done because they're on separate brands. I, 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 what are you gonna do with Santos? Are you really gonna have him lose in the tournament? Probably. So I think, and also because then you're gonna end up with potentially the match down the road of AJ versus LA Knight maybe in the tournament. We'll talk, we'll talk more predictions here in a second. So I'm gonna say LA Knight does move on in the tournament. And then rounding off the brackets, you've got, you've got Lashley going up against Tamatanga. This should be cool. First singles match for Tamatanga. You got the bloodline all involved. Now, I wonder with this tournament bracket, this specific match, Bobby Lashley, the pride, you get Street Profits all in there, and you got new bloodline, who presumably will be at ringside for this match. Does the bloodline get involved and cost Bobby the match? Do they set up almost a TV program where you're gonna get the Pride versus Bloodline and start getting them mixing it up too? Which wouldn't be a bad idea. It would keep the Bloodline still interesting week to week. And you don't always wanna have Randy Kevin Owens dealing with the Bloodline. I think that could get stale. I'm gonna say, this is tough, but yeah, you know what? I am gonna say Lashley does win, but I don't know if it's gonna be necessarily a clean victory. This could be a DQ where Tamatanga basically gets himself disqualified by just in going rage mode and hitting Lashley with a bunch of chairs. I could see that and having it fall apart. And the reason why I lean more towards Lashley winning, he had the backstage segment, the little interaction with Carmelo Hayes. It could make a lot more sense to see Lashley and Carmelo kind of advance in the tournament and maybe fight each other, but we see how the brackets shake up. Okay, if we advance in the tournament and we look over at the Raw bracket, you got Gunther going up against whoever wins Kofi versus Rey Mysterio's match. Kofi is doing this all for Xavier Woods. Rey Mysterio doesn't have much of a story with this for the tournament. I'm gonna say that Kofi advances because then he could try to get his revenge on Gunther, which I don't think he will. So I am gonna say that the bracket will shape up like Gunther going up against Kofi on next week's Raw and then Gunther advancing again in the quarterfinals. The other match that we're gonna see is going to be Dragunov versus Jey Uso. For that match, 
I'm gonna say Dragon Off advances, and you're gonna get Ju. So either losing clean, but you gotta. They want to protect J. So I'm gonna feel like they're gonna have Judgment Day attack Jey Uso. Maybe that is going to set up a rematch for Damian Priest versus Jay. Because the thing with Damian Priest right now with the title and Judgment Day, he apologized on Monday Night Raw and said everything was cool with Judgment Day. But I feel like he is trying to move himself away from them, doing the cheap victories and things like that. I can see Damian Priest going to Jey Uso being like, look, they attacked you again on Raw, cost you your King of the Ring match. Let's fight. I'll do the honorable thing here and do the one-on-one -on -one with you again. We'll do it at Saudi Arabia at King Queen of the Ring. Give them a rematch. Do it in like a steel cage or something like that to keep all the Judgment Day out. It Just to give more friction and tension in Judgment Day. Not so much regarding Jey Uso. So regardless, I think Dragunov moves on in the tournament. Then you are going to end up with Ilya versus Gunther going in for the finals of the tournament. I think then you're going to end up with I think Gunther then goes to the finals and takes on the whoever's on the SmackDown side that we'll look at. But you're going to get this Dragunov Gunther match almost as a tease because we have seen, a lot of us have seen the Ilya, the Gunther matches from prior and it's banger. It is like five star match. It's just like the best thing ever. I think that they are going to try and tease everybody by showing them, hey, check out this match you may have heard of it heard of these two going at it and again it's to speak to the broader audience and you're establishing dragon off every single week with these giant victories i think he will come up short in the tournament though against gunther it, it feels like gunther's gonna win this whole tournament but we'll look at the rest of the bracket here but i do feel between the two i think gunther is gonna move on to the finals so if we switch over to the smackdown side and how this could play out in matt's world okay if we have aj styles moving on he is probably going to take on Carmelo Hayes. That would be a fantastic match between these two. This one is also tricky. You got a good face and a good heel going at it. This match will be awesome if it is going to happen on SmackDown or they're going to do like the quarterfinals and all of that uh, at King of the Ring itself and get more matches out of it. AJ versus Carmelo Hayes. You're either going to get Bobby... I feel like you could get Bobby Lashley. If you got Bobby Lashley moving on in the tournament, though, then you need Carmelo Hayes to kind of move on. So I, it's hard to say because I think like you could set up a Bobby Lashley-Carmelo Hayes feud, which would be a lot of fun. Do you have Carmelo move on in the tournament or does AJ move on? AJ is really dealing with Cody unless they're totally going to switch things up. This match is kind of a flip of the coin. What do you guys think? I'm gonna say that Carmelo moves on in the tournament and then it's gonna leave AJ doing something else. I don't know what AJ is gonna do. Maybe he is gonna go fight Cody, but I think you wanna keep Carmelo really strong. He had the opening match against Cody coming into SmackDown. You gotta wanna keep that momentum going for him. So we moved LA Knight, yeah, over into the bracket and he moved on against Escobar. And I said that Lashley is probably going to move on against Tamatanga and it's a schmozzy finish. So getting Lashley versus LA Knight moving on into the tournament, that is actually a tricky one. Because if I move LA Knight over into the tournament, but you could end up with Lashley going up against Carmelo to try and get to the final match against Gunther. So this could be a big, big thing for Carmelo Hayes if I really look at it. Because LA Knight, I feel like, he doesn't need King of the Ring. It'd be fun. But I think Car I think LA Knight would do better if he's just going to get into a like United States Championship program, getting into like SummerSlam, or put him in the Money in the Bank tournament, or he could win Money in the Bank this year. I don't think LA Knight needs King of the Ring. So I will say, begrudgingly, I will say Lashley's going to move on against LA Knight. He's going to get taken out. Lashley is going to get that victory. That's going to move Lashley on to maybe take on Carmelo Hayes. And that brings in that story arc that little tiny thing that they have that thread of lashley versus carmelo and then i think that what you're going to do is you can have a couple of weeks where you're building carmelo versus lashley and carmelo being the arrogant face or heel like they're both kind of tweeners right like lashley is great because he can be a heel on a dime so i think it would be lashley almost being like this is my mission is to you know beat some respect into you carmelo you're not king of the ring i am I think Lashley moving on in King of the Ring is good too. You need somebody big and strong and you could get Carmelo to kind of defy the odds, beat the odds and beat Bobby Lashley. So my pick for the tournament is going to be in the finals. You're going to have Gunther on one side and you're going to get Carmelo Hayes 
to beat Bobby Lashley, get that little bit of respect for him from Lashley, and then you're gonna get Hayes versus Gunther in the finals. This keeps Carmelo extremely strong. You get him kind of fighting from underneath. It depends how they want to position Carmelo because his character, yes, he's a heel in NXT. They brought him up and he's got the cocky, the arrogance and all of that. I don't think you need to have a straight up babyface versus heel. And it really will give WWE an opportunity, I think, to decide how they want to position Carmelo. Is he going to be a babyface? Is he going to be a heel? Or is he just going to be him and just kind of in the middle there? It will be interesting how they use him. Gunther is heel. That is Gunther. And you get the matches with Ilya. You get Gunther really struggling to get through the entire tournament. That's where I think it gets interesting, where Gunther gets to the finals and you have the underdog of Carmelo. And that way you've, across the entire tournament, you've helped to establish a lot of the newer stars and get things kind of rolling into a good position. So again, it can help really establish Ilya through the tournament. And if you do push Carmelo through to the finals, you have established him as great wrestler, that he can talk on the mic, that you get more of his character out there for main roster on SmackDown. Ultimately though, and again, comment below, who do you think is going to win the men's side of the King of the Ring? For me, I think it is going to end up being Gunther. And that's not a bad thing, but it's how are they going to follow up with it? My biggest question and biggest concern with King of the Ring, and it has been this way for years that they've done it in the past, is the follow through. What do you do after King of the Ring? Let's say it is Gunther that actually wins the whole thing. What do you do with Gunther next? Does he get a title shot? Does he get to walk in and say, I'm going after the world title now because I am the ring general, I am King of the Ring? Does it push him to the next level? That's the big question I have, but tell me your thoughts, your predictions for the men's side of King of the Ring, and we'll do another video covering the women's side once the bracket is all revealed. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel, and do me a favor, hit that subscribe button if you like content like this. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.